Hello, Tim Wilmot here and welcome to my watercolour demonstration. This time focusing on the use of splattering in watercolour, the splattering technique. As I go through the demo, I'll cover the what, when and how, what, what is it, when to use it, how to use it, and also cover lots of other different uh, watercolour techniques as well. Um, as you can see, this is the a part of the end painting and we will be including figures, vehicles, shadows, light, buildings, bit of perspective as well, bit of everything. So this is the subject for this watercolour demonstration. This is Pisa in Italy and it's a back street just down from the Tower of Pisa. And I think it makes a nice subject for a watercolour for a number of reasons. First of all, we've got the lovely warmth of the buildings, the redness of the buildings contrasting against the coolness of the sky. So that would be a nice thing to, to include in the painting. Secondly, we've got the, the big range of values of the dark shadows underneath the roof here, down the right hand side of the building, um, up the alleyway here, uh, dark shadows in the foreground, some light with the vehicles, light catching, the sunlight catching those vehicles, bit of reflection, um, maybe a bit of light catching some of these windows, lights and so on. So we'll make a play on that and trying to Trying to have the light values next to the dark values, that would be a good thing to try and do as well. As you saw in my finished painting, there's going to be some figures as well. I'm moving things around. So there is this figure here, which doesn't really do much for the composition. So I, I've i gone for a, a couple of figures over on the right hand side and to have them contrasting the lightness of them contrasting against the dark background uh, which which again um, is a nicer thing to do rather than just having them all one value and maybe missing elements of them also we've got some diagonal shadows on the building as well those balconies um, these lamps protruding out from the building creating these sort of 45 degree shadows, which is a nice thing to have over on the left hand side, it draw, drawing the eye into the center of the composition, these, these diagonal lines. So lots of opportunities to use different watercolor techniques. So let's get started. The paper I'm using for this demonstration is Saunders Waterford. This is cold press uh, surface so it's the medium texture not too rough not smooth it's in the middle and it's 300 grams in weight the paper is secured down with some masking tape i've got the board at a slight angle the paper is not pre-wetted it's just as it comes tape down it's going to buckle a little bit not too much i don't mind it buckling too much uh, so no no prior preparation there just tape down nice and securely i'm actually drawing here with an hb pencil normally i would um, use a softer pencil and we're just getting in the outline of the rooftops first of all and then down the right hand side of the building just getting in the rough outline of the building and for me it doesn't matter too much that some of the pencil lines show in the end painting that sort of adds to some of the loose um, impression of it so just just now putting in a few windows just roughly where they're going to be maybe emphasize some of them that are going to be the balconies 
So there's one on the right, one on the left. And then as best I can just judge that third row down to street level, getting in that important line there across the the street. Now, here we've got a little bit of perspective to get right the view up the this dark street and then on the right hand side the the rooftop buildings down to street level again I don't want to put too much detail over on the right hand side it's I don't want to draw the attention of the viewer unnecessarily over there um, just going to be very just just a few basic shapes of shadows and some architectural details nothing nothing too precise now we'll have some diagonal shadows going across which will then intercept with a car, a parked car. So starting with the rooftop, back windscreen, the body of the car, the wheel arch, So we're sort of seeing a little bit of the side of the car. It's not, it's not completely end on. And the outline of the shadow, the foreground shadow, as it comes from left to right, the shadow being created by that, that parked car going across to the right hand side, up at a slight angle on the right hand side maybe because of the nature of the buildings over on the left hand side um, so not not a not a completely straight straight line and two figures which as i say are going to be fairly light contrasting against the dark background a couple of figures make them different, not too similar, different pose to them. Let's have another figure. Slightly further away. Sometimes I'll do a little, little bit of cross hatching just to indicate their faces which we'll paint over with some thicker body, um, uh, thicker flesh color. I would normally, as I said, normally would use a softer pencil. Um, as I've got a slightly harder pencil here, I'm just going with a few lines a few more times just to emphasize those lines so I don't um, obliterate them in the wash. There was or there is this, that little car lurking behind that right hand figure. A few horizontal lines, windows on that left hand building. As I go over on that left hand side, not not make it too detailed. One of the shutters is sticking out, which creates a nice shadow. One of these diagonal shadows. And a lot of these diagonal shadows they'll be parallel to each other so 
you if you're if you're attempting a scene like this you might like to try and get those shadows lightly drawn in there's a doorway a porch beyond the car there get that one in which is it has a bit of a dark shadow below the porch so that might contrast quite nicely with the top of the roof so now for the first stage getting down the initial wash and we're going to start with the sky now the palette i've got here in this demonstration this is my travel palette so it's not my normal uh, studio palette, if you like. This has got a, a very limited um, selection of colors. I've got a blue, which is uh, from Sennelier. It's a Cenarius blue, as they call it. Um, quite a, almost a fluorescent blue. I've got a bit of uh, violet as well, a bit of lavender, sorry, lavender. Um, top left corner, I've got a Sennelier yellow, just a sort of medium yellow, and then a Windsor red, bottom left corner. And the dark color is actually um, some very old paint I've, I've found the other day. It's a, a 40 year old tube of WH Smith, it's a UK brand, WH Smith, ivory black watercolor. So really cheap um, color. I'm not sure how it's gonna perform. Um, going to replace this being a travel palette it's going to it's going to replace uh what i would normally have which would be a neutral tint or paints paints gray so with the sky a bit of a mixture of scenarios blue and that lavender went over the outline of the buildings um fairly sort of it not wasn't too wet and as it came down to the rooftops it was fairly dry dragged it over the outline of the rooftops and now in with the buildings which is a, a warm mixture. Now over on the right hand side, I'm going to be going over some of this again. But as I'm painting in the buildings, I'm trying to introduce different colors, trying as, as if you look at the actual photograph, there's lots of different reds and oranges and ochres and bits of blue in there as well and green reflected green off the grass um in front of the buildings and the trees so so many different um colors in there and that's what we've got to try and replicate here um with this building is not have it too um too boring and as i'm coming down introduce these different colors into the mix bit of careful painting around uh, painting around now the shapes of the porch the door cover and the building and some of the windows some of the windows or shutters that might be catching the light so down in that bottom left hand corner of my palette I'm mixing in generally the warm colors top right corner in my travel palette will be the cooler colors the blues uh, bottom right corner will be generally the darks top left corner uh, anything that i'm mixing with yellow generally so down to street level now the brush i'm using is a mop brush it's from a company called Raphael, and this is a soft aqua brush and it's a size six so it's fairly big i'd always recommend when using a mop brush try and use as big a brush as you can depending on the size of your paper and the amount of detail work you want to do or the sort of painting around that you want to do um so try and use the, as big a brush as you can and this particular one has got a good 
sharp edge to it as well. You could almost do the whole painting with this one brush if you had to. So down to the foreground now, darkening up the mix a little bit, trying to get a little bit cooler with the street. Going up to meet the the buildings and then across the figures painting over some of these figures legs maybe just leave a few little spots where the light is just catching their legs and then on down to the bottom of the page where it can be anything really. I'm just wanting to cover up the paper at this stage. This will be, um, I'll be going over this again, of course, with the, the foreground shadows. So this is just um, to, to cover up that space. I'll add in, while this is all still moist, I'll add in a little bit of red just to help with the uh, give a bit of warmth to that foreground where the building the reflection of the building the lights hitting that building and we can see a little bit of that influence on the on the road surface so while it's moist just adding in a bit of red pigment on top and blend it into that wash. Now, a bit of splattering in the building. Why would we use splattering? Well, it's a nice way of adding in a bit more interest to your painting. It's a technique that only works with watercolor. It's, it's fairly unique to watercolor. Um, but a nice way of adding in a bit more texture to these old walls. So it has to be done at the right point of the, the moisture of that wash. So timing is quite important. It takes a little bit of practicing. If you start splattering too soon and the, and the paint is too wet that you're splattering onto, you just get uh, a nasty blotch um, if you leave it too late and the the paint is fairly dry that you're splattering onto there'll be hardly any effect at all so you just got to judge it right and you get these nice little blooms these little patches lighter patches appearing with a little border around them and it it, it works really well on these old buildings uh, it would work well in, it's going to work well in, in shadows, hopefully, uh, in f big foliage areas on trees, perhaps your painting fields, splattering would work well there as, also. And I've done it with a synthetic brush. I just um, picked up a, a small, medium, medium sized synthetic brush with clear water and then just flicked it on on the uh, onto the paper at a, a few inches a few centimeters above the painting and tapping it against my finger or just flicking it in midair takes a bit of practice it's quite a random effect um, don't patch things up though when when uh, the splatterings happen don't attempt to adjust things or amend things so a nice way of adding in that extra detail that extra bit of interest and texture to a larger area of paint after everything is dry i'm now going in with the dark shadows underneath the rooftops And using the same brush here, which, as I say, it's got quite a nice sharp edge to it. 
So in that bottom right corner, a nice dark mix, a bit of that ivory black with reds and blues. And there's a slight kink in that rooftop. Over to the right hand side. And with these shadows, it's best not to go over them too many times. Try and do it all in one pass. Try and have have as have the right amount of paint in your brush and go over it all in one go rather than overworking it um, which which can which can ruin the freshness of the watercolor so try and do it all in one so with some of these extra diagonal shadows i'm trying to get them trying to get the diagonal lines parallel to each other. So that shadow is one of the balconies. In the top left, we've got a, a bit of a shadow coming out, maybe from a shutter. And I'm holding the brush fairly close to the tip for this more precise work. Other times when I want to have a more loose approach to it, I'll be holding it right at the end. But I do need to be fairly accurate with these lines. The edges so it does need a little bit more control. So continuing on. So these shadows are not just pure black. It's going to be, they, they have, um, they, they have a combination of the blue and the red with a little bit of this ivory black. If you don't have ivory black, then use what I would normally use, which would be neutral tint or Payne's grey. Now the right hand side of the building is going to get quite dark down towards the bottom. It's dark at the top, dark towards the bottom and just introducing little bits of extra colour as I go down so it's not all one one value another important edge to get right is the that left hand edge of the shadow and sometimes what I do is as I'm drawing these vertical lines at the corner of my eye, look at the right hand edge of my paper, the masking tape, and just try and get those parallel. As a, as a sort of um, guide as I'm coming down. Now, as we get down to the figures, I need to be a bit careful painting around their shoulders and faces.
and then more of a horizontal shadow crossing the street joining the middle building to the right hand building and these figures also there they're serving an important role as connecting uh, the the left hand the middle part of the building building the, the middle part of the painting to the right hand side and also the when I get the foreground shadows in joining the foreground with the the middle and the background so just some very basic shapes of shadows and where the middle building is creating a shadow over on the right hand side we've got a, quite a dark patch coming down that right hand wall and broken up by a shutter just sticking out a shutter that's open there so I've just painted around that continue up the right hand side the line gets thicker as it comes towards us Now the shadow starting from the right hand building which will come down that right hand side across the foreground over to the left hand side and serving the purpose of connecting joining up all these different uh, parts of the painting the figures the car the right hand side with the left hand side so there's a dark shadow underneath um, a balcony or something in that top right corner just a few more lines to help with the perspective in a bit of blue come down at a slight angle just following the the pencil outline that I did down to street level keep adding in different colors And a little bit darker in that bottom right corner as well so foreground come across bit of a jagged edge to it there where I'm meeting the people keep going 
over to the left hand side joining with the the car and its shadow Not sure what that white thing is there in the middle, but looks quite interesting to keep in. And then extend the shadows back over to the right hand side, joining those figures. Quickly, in a loose fashion, continue on. And then a few horizontal lines there joining with the left hand side of the car. Now let's get these figures in, starting with their faces. So with a smaller synthetic brush now, painting in their faces, I've made up bit of a combination of the yellow and the red there and having their faces sort of facing each other not pointing the same not pointing the same direction and this figures body a bluish, a sort of bluish colour and I left a little bit of highlight on the left hand side. Sometimes I will use white gouache as a later stage in a painting to add more highlights on a, a figure's head and shoulders or arms just where it's catching the light but in this example um, I may not, may not have to do that. So right hand figure different colour. I've got that car to do on the right hand side of that figure as well. Legs in a slightly different poise to the that first figure. And that minor person now, first with the face, legs, Now the car, first with the windscreen, and then a slightly lighter colour for the body of the car, and we're going to let it bleed down into the shadow. So I picked up a little bit of water on my brush for the body of the car, just to make it a little bit lighter. And then with the slight slope of the board, it's just bleeding a little bit into that shadow I did. And over on the left hand side, I wanted that bigger diagonal shadow to come in. Again, trying to be careful with the, the, the angle, um, making it as parallel as I can to the other previous shadows I did.
and there is this car just just slightly behind that right hand figure that is parked up against the roadside so again windscreen then the body of the car I've got the light hitting the top of the car and the top of the the uh, the boot of the bonnet and then something dark underneath the car bring it drag it across the street and then up up the building up the side of the building another little connection car to building all along the way the foreground shadow that I'm going to be doing some splattering in very shortly that's steadily drying I'm keeping an eye an eye on it as I said before the timing is important um, don't do it too early don't do it too late there's an optimum time to do that so I'm just continuing on with these shadows and there is this sort of roof there's a building on top of the roof some sort of uh, maybe it's a lift shaft or something So now I need to paint in some of the shutters. So it's going to be green. So with my limited palette, of course, mix up equal part of yellow and blue initially. And actually have a fairly dark green. And then with the edge that I've I've got on this mop brush. You could also use a, a little flat brush. That might be quite a good brush to use for these shutters. Like the shadows, I need to do them all in one, not overwork them. And not too wet. Not too wet, so I'm trying to keep that nice flat edge on my brush and I've just mixed up a bit of the ivory ivory black there just to darken up the green and this being a loose style of painting these aren't these shutters aren't pure rectangles they've got some jagged edges they're not complete they've got bits missing they're not all in in line so get that second row in and then third row Some shutters on top of the balconies. Just a few little spots here and there. In a almost a fairly random fashion. Where I see maybe too much open space in that building, just put in a mark or another shutter perhaps a distant shot on that far background building something on the roof now with 
my small to medium size synthetic brush and a dark some dark paint I'm now drawing in some verticals so this painting's got a bit of everything it's got horizontals diagonals helping with the composition horizontals verticals get in the bottom of the balconies and a few faint lines to suggest the balcony railings Just touch up a little bit of that shadow behind the figure. Right hand side, getting a suggestion of the balcony, balcony on the that right hand building, and then a few more. lines to help with the perspective I'm conscious of try not to overdo it on this right hand side as well otherwise it'll be conflicting with the main focal point which may be the figures and the and the, the the middle building so I don't want to I don't want to put too much detail in here so I'm constantly looking at it and evaluating whether to do any more and it's time now to do a bit of splattering on the foreground shadows. So it's it's just about the right stage to do the splattering, and this is just going to add another add another dimension to this shadow, add a bit more texture to it, a bit more interest, like we did with the the facade of the building in the middle. So as I said, great to use splattering in these bigger areas of paint. Could be a field, uh, could be foliage, certainly shadows, old buildings, ideal for. Probably wouldn't do it in a sky area. I haven't seen many other watercolors do it in the sky area, unless probably they just put down the sky wash and and do a bit of splattering straight away just to maybe add, add in the effect of clouds. So a technique that um, is quite unique to watercolour and fairly random, sometimes difficult to control. So I'm now just letting the paper dry and very slowly you can see these this sort of blossoming effect appearing almost like little flowers appearing in that in that shadow area so now for a bit more detail bit more detail work with a with my small medium sized brush fairly thickish paint mixing up that ivory black 
predominantly. So a few dark verticals behind the shutters and a, a bit of detail for some of the windows as well. And that little white patch on the wall, I just created a little bit of a shadow. I don't know what it is, but just make something of it by putting in a, a bit of shadow to the right hand side underneath it. Perhaps there's, um, well, there are a few little aerials above the roof. Getting a really dark edge in the shadows there, and just a few windows. Thinking about that perspective again. Going going to the distance. I just want to dry things up a little bit so I've got my little portable hairdryer out drying up this foreground before I add in a, a few more bits of detail with the darker paint This is where, if the paint has buckled, you will see it on good quality paper like this. It will just flatten almost totally, um, go back to its flat, flat shape again. So you lose any of those, uh, any of the buckling of the paper. So it's nearly dry. And in those shadows, help with the perspective a bit with a few of those lines leading the eye in. Maybe uh, some lines for those gutters, edges of the road. A few tire marks, bollards. Just where those um, little light patches were, I just draw a little dark vertical line below that so it's an instant bollard. Now a few thin horizontals just to mark the the uh, lines on the shutters. So I've got quite a sharp edge on this brush. This is an Escoda brush, which is another make I regularly use. And they've got like, like Raphael, they've got a very good range of synthetic brushes. So quickly paint in some of these verticals on the shutters.
and then a few dark lines underneath that porch perhaps some lines to just some marks to define those wheel arches on the car nearly there just a few more tiny tiny marks back on the building. Now with a, a rubber, a razor, just rub out some of the pencil marks I had just on the, obviously where I can see the exposed paper, tops of the uh, figures, the, uh, the car as well, just rub those out. Obviously do this when the paint is absolutely dry. Flick away the bits and we are done. So what I'll do now is I'll swap over to an image of the uh, finished painting and just do a little bit of a summary. So here's the finished painting and an exercise in splattering techniques which really helps with these old with the surf giving it the, the, the texture of the surface of these old buildings where little bits of plastering has fallen away on um, some of the brickwork has been exposed to the elements the sun and the rain and so on and a bit of splattering in the shadows as well just to help add a bit more interest to that foreground area so hopefully they're just my insight into why it might be used when is a good time to use it and the different techniques we also covered in a way a little bit of composition and taking the the photograph um, my photograph of Pisa and then trying to think about simplifying the scene evaluating first of all is this a good subject for watercolor not every photograph will make make for a good watercolor subject uh, this one had a had a decent chance because it had those those different values, some silhouetted shapes, um, the 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 warmth of the buildings, the coolness of the sky, and the opportunity to introduce these different techniques: the wash, the splattering as we used, body paint, thicker paint, just using different di different consistencies of paint for for achieving different effects. And a bit of practice of getting in figures into the landscape. Don't shy away from introducing figures into your landscape. Different sizes of figures. Uh, not dead center. Remember in the photograph I had that central figure which I had to do something about. Move it to the left or the right or, or introduce new figures. And that quite dominant vehicle as well that was in the photograph I changed that to to just a car so I hope you like that demonstration uh, please see more of my work up on my website www.timwilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com you'll see more of my paintings up there and information about uh, courses I do 
workshops. I also do online workshops. So if you do want any online tuition, wherever you are in the world, whatever time, well, within reason, whatever time zone, I'm based in the UK, um, but I've done instruction with many people all, all over the world in different time zones, please contact me um, via my website. So timwilmot.com, you'll see all my contact details up there. Send me a private email. Uh, also up on the up on my website are, are more details of up and coming workshops. Um, I am this recording is in February 2018. I am doing a workshop or a couple of workshops in Italy this year, um, April, May time, and also later in October. You'll see more information up there. So thanks for watching and look forward to catching you on the next demonstration. If you've got any ideas for future demonstrations like this, you've got any photographs for uh, consideration as a watercolor tutorial, please email them to me. Again, all my contact details um, are up on my website. Thanks for watching.